Hi and welcome back to Devon Lee Design Studio everybody. My name's Nicole and today we are here for Slow Stitching Sunday. So let's get into it. no matter where you're watching from thank you for taking some time out of your day and spending it with me while we do some slow stitching and we are here for part three of my borrow table runner that I'm doing and I am very excited to say that I've had some lovely messages from people letting me know that they're actually have ordered their fabrics and they're going to give it a go so I'm super excited about that that we're getting some more people to give this beautiful craft a go so Basically, I have been stitching my little hands off and I have not completed my stitching on my borrow yet, um, but I am getting there. I am a little over halfway through and we'll have a closer look at it in just a moment. But first of all, I'd like to say if you are new here, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. And don't forget, if you have yet to subscribe to the channel, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it. And then that way you're not going to miss out on any future posts. And during the video, you will see a little tip jar that'll pop up to give you a reminder to help support the channel. And the link is down below for that. So if you're liking the video and you feel like buying me a coffee, you can do that by just simply clicking on the link and then following the prompts. But that is the business side of things out. I am sorry that this video is a little late today. Uh, normally I have it going up fairly early. Uh, yesterday I had a lot on and I didn't get to uh, film my stitching side of it or anything like that. And then this morning when I woke up we had no power. So <laughs> we now have power. It is now after midday and so I'm going to uh, get this all sorted for you and then you'll see where we're up to. Before we switch to the next, uh, to the cam the other camera, basically Basically, you're going to need a few things today if you're already up to the point that I'm up to. So I have been, as I said, I've been busily stitching away, but I haven't quite finished. But I'm still going to show you because I've finished one end. So I started in the middle and I ended up working out to the uh, left hand side. And now I'm back to like I'm starting at the middle again and working out to the right. So basically, if you haven't done any stitching yet, you want to start in the middle and you want to work your way out. So I worked my way out and then up and then out again and then up. And that's how I sort of worked it. Um, and I decided that I was going to mix it a little bit up with the stitches and everything like that. So you'll get to see that in just a moment. But if you are going to be doing uh, your borders by hand, that's what I'm going to be showing you today. Um, we are going to do a simple back stitch. So it almost looks like your sewing machine has... It's essentially you're doing hand stitching the same way that your sewing machine does it. Okay, so, um, and that's the whole purpose of Slow Stitching Saturday is to go back to basics and create everything where we can by hand. Now, am I going to do the whole table runner by hand? I'll see how I go today and how quick it goes. If it does go pretty quick, I will. Now, I was going to finish up the table runner today, but as I said, I didn't get all the stitching done. So it is going to stretch out for another week. So I'm going to continue stitching on it this week and then hopefully we'll be ready to put the... Um, the final touches on it next week so I but today I am going to show you at one end how to because I always whenever I do a table runner and even a quilt for that matter whenever I do something I always tend to do the short edges first when I put my borders on I don't know why that's just what I do you may do yours differently but today I've already got one end with my short end all completed and I've put some interfacing on the back which is a shapelex 101 so you'll get to see all that on and you'll need some border fabric. So I decided that I was going to use this gorgeous linen that came in one of the packs. It's very neutral, um, but it's got the brown color that is through all of my um, table runner. All right, so once you know what size your uh, border is going to be, I'm doing a three inch border and uh, my table runner is 10 and a half inches wide, but I've actually cut my uh, strip of fabric that I need a little bit bigger. So let's switch over to uh, the next, the other camera and you can see what I'm working on. Now grab a cuppa if you're not stitching along, but you're just going to be here to see what's going on. Grab yourself a cuppa. If you are stitching, make sure that you've got uh, a sharps needle, a pin cushion to put that in. That's a little pin cushion that I did in the um, 
down the rabbit hole magazine so you can go and make yourself one of those I've got my thread snips here take my guard off I do actually have my quick unpick just in case I need to do that and um, I've also got a um, a lead pencil to mark out the uh, seam allowance okay so I've already cut my um, border to the size I need and I've already put the interfacing on the back just to save us a little bit of time today so and you can see I've marked my quarter inch there now if you've never done this before I do highly recommend and I haven't done a lot of it but I have done it before so I actually have done this before um, so and we're just going to use a simple back stitch and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a moment but it is if you've never done it before and I still mark my my lines out anyway and I've done it a quite a uh, probably about three or four times now and so I've got my rhythm down sort of down pat I haven't done it on camera so it's probably going to look a little bit unco um, but for the most part I'm pretty good like I just um, put it on I mark out my lines and I just go for it so I'm just going to double check that we can see everything there you can see that nice and clearly and I will get closer as I start stitching you're also going to want some thread as well now I have some cotton thread here and I don't think I want to use that though, but um, it's just normal sewing thread that I'm using. And uh, is it cotton? Yeah, it's 100% cotton. I think I will use it. Like I'm not using this as a quilt or anything like that. And it's not going to be in a high traffic area. So I think I will use the 100% cotton. I'm a little bit reluctant sometimes to use um, natural fibers when I'm doing a back stitch because... Um, like stitching because I find sometimes they break so we'll see how we go I mean I've yeah I'll give it a go and we'll see how, how it uh, shapes up but I've just got a 100% um, this is just my quilting cotton that I use from my um, long arm machine and uh, I use this on my like heirloom quilts my hexagon quilts or anything like that uh, for the most part a lot of people uh, when they come in we have a discussion about cotton and we talk about what their quilt is going to be used for if it's just them using it then we will go with 100 percent cotton if it's going to a child or a teenager you know or someone that's not going to be as respectful to the quilt as you know you might be i tend to we tend to talk about the strength of the the thread because obviously natural fibers wear down polyester thread is a stronger thread it's more um it it um bears up to washing and all that sort of stuff so when you come in to get your quilt done we have a lot of discussions about patterns that we're going to put on uh what threads we're going to use uh, for the most part though i do use bottom line thread which is a polyester which we use for english paper piecing here on this channel all right so don't forget if you're liking this video so far don't forget to give it a like down below and get me help uh, help me get seen <coughs> excuse me now for the past week I have been avoiding my family because they have all been sick and this morning I have woken up and I'm feeling a little bit average in the throat so I'm not going to be sticking around for too long today because I still want to put all my videos out and we all know if you've been around for a while that my voice as soon as I get a cold decides to vacate so if you see a series of crafting videos like diamond painting or stitch with me's where it's only got music generally means that I have lost my voice and I cannot talk so <laughs> I'm going to get this video in today and while my voice, voice is still working I'm going to film my stitch with me for Monday and anything else that I need to do some talking in it may hold up one of the videos that I had planned to do this week which is the uh, row by row but anyway we'll see how we go I'm going to once this is finished I'm going to put my book in and then as I said I'll do my stitch with me and uh, get that out of the way and then um <laughs> just film it at least anyway I won't edit it and then I'm going to go and make myself a honey and lemon tea and that is all I'm going to drink for the next 48 hours and uh, I'm also going to make my famous ginger garlic tea which wards off vampires as well as kicks any sort of laryngitis or sore throat in the backside so all right now let's get into uh, another thing that you're going to need is you're going to need some pins uh, dressmaking pins are fine for this they're, they're a nice fine um, I like to use my applique pins which also have glass head um, uh, glass heads on them as well so if I need to iron it I can all right so once you have uh, well actually let's have a look at what I've got done so far so you can see there 
um, that is everything that I've got done. So you can see where I'm up to here. Um, so yeah, I decided to mix it up a little bit. As I was stitching along, I was really enjoying it and doing, you know, just the running stitch. My running stitch, now I can really see why they did this. And like the, the fabric at this end feels like really soft and, and this has become very durable. Like you can see why they started doing this, the, the borrow technique and, and just putting layers upon layers. And oh my God, it would be so warm. And um, I was talking to the lovely Gail from Wom Wombat Hollow Crafts and we were talking last night about it and she goes, you should make a jacket out of it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to collect some more. Um, I'm not going to do it in the Japanese linens because it's going to be all or any wool. Um, as such, I'm going to go to Spotlight and just see what they've got in um, like lightweight denims and stuff like that and give it a go with that. So what I did on this one um, through the week, now you can see here, this is where I started and I've come back and I've actually filled in a couple of spots because I really do like the closeness um, of the stitches that I've got down here and I've got the little crosses happening and I'm just sporadically putting them through and where I've got these patches here that is a piece of fabric that I've got the different patches on it I'm sort of mixing it up in there so you can see in this one here I've got got them going um, horizontal I've also got them going vertical but then I've got a couple of um, spots there where I've put the little plus signs and it's just sort of set it off. I really like the look of it. And then on the red ones here, I thought, you know what? I might do a little bit of angle. I'm still not sure that I like that. I might have, um, I think I might have would have liked to have put maybe a little circle on there. But for my first piece, I think I'm doing really well. I've gone over, if you haven't yet, we've got a Pinterest board, which I'll link up down below that you can go and suss things out over there and see the different, um, especially some of the historical pieces. I've got a couple of historical pieces over there. So you can go over and have a look at that as well. And I'm slowly but surely finding bits and pieces to add on there. So it's always growing. So follow the board and then that way you can keep up with what's happening on the borrow board. Um, so yeah, so I'm pretty happy with with what I've done and I got the best compliment ever. My youngest daughter is a phenomenal sewer. Like she is a perfectionist, but she's not a perfectionist to the point where she lets it stop her from doing things, but she doesn't like to sew. She's great at it. And it's always the way though. The person that absolutely loves to sew, like is perfect at sewing, but doesn't love it. And, <laughs> and then the rest of us just struggle. She's one of those people, which is great. We all need those people. <laughs> but anyway, she, she actually said to me one day, um, oh, well, it's not my thing, mum. <laughs> I'm like, okay then, no worries. So I show her and she's very animated and you can see what she's thinking on her face. And I show her pieces from time to time, you know, maybe something will spark her, her interest or something like that. And she's like, mm, yeah, it's great. And she's just saying it to be nice. But I showed her this and she looked at it and she goes, that is oddly pleasing to the eye. And I said, I know, right? Like I, I am just absolutely loving it. I can't wait to, I'm going to do another one and I'm going to do it in the indigo, indigo colors because I got a whole heap of those when I went to the, the craft show, but I'm really loving it. And these are just going to look amazing on my little, um, on my little coffee table in the lounge room. And I'm also going to do some cushions as well because these cushions will stand the test of time, I think. All right. So that's what I've done. And today, as I said, we're here to uh, see how to sew a border on. As I said, I have already put my interfacing on there because this end is now complete and I don't want my stitches to come undone just in case I haven't put them together properly. And so I know that that's going to hold it all. I've trimmed up, um, I've just squared up down a little bit. Okay, um, you can see there I've just trimmed off. I haven't worried too much about this side, but I have actually made my border fabric a little bit bigger, um, a couple of millimeters bigger because I might trim some off and then I've got a little bit of wiggle room. So once you've put your interfacing on, okay, and your back does look quite messy. Like you can see here with my crosses, here I was jumping around everywhere. This is where I sort of first done it. I was jumping around here and then here you can see that I went one way and then I've gone the other way and it's worked better. And as I said, I am learning just along as I go and finding my technique because I have never done anything like this before. So I've got my interfacing on the back so that's good to go and we're going to get our piece of linen. So let me just lay everything down, make sure that you can see everything there so I can bring it in a little bit closer as well. Okay, and then we're going to lay our fabrics, just like with anything, right sides together. Okay, and I've marked my quarter inch uh, seam allowance. And then I'm just going to get my pins wherever they just went. And I'm just going to pin that into place. Just so it's not flapping around. And 
wouldn't you know it, I had my, um, I was sitting waiting for uh, one of my daughters the other day and I left my um, thimble <laughs> in the car and Brendan took the car today. <laughs> The first day ever, ever that he takes the car and my little basket of stuff, um, English paper piecing is sitting in the back with my thimble in it. So I'm going to uh, do some stitching without a thimble today. I do not recommend it, but I'm going to give it a go. It's my own fault for leaving it in the car. All right, so we're going to grab our thread. Now, because this is a table runner, I am, and this is a 50 weight thread that I've got, I would normally use a... Uh, 40 weight thread for hand stitching so I wouldn't I yeah a 40 weight is a good weight for um, sewing for longevity it, it gives it strength and stuff like that so today I'm just going to double my my threads um, just to make it a little bit stronger for me because I don't want to have to redo it um, and this is going to end up with a backing and everything on it anyway but I still don't want it to come apart and also, you'll be able to see what I'm going to do. And I'm um, sorry about my finger, but I burnt it and it uh, the blister popped. So, um, yeah, it's uh, not a very happy, happy finger at the moment. It's not sore anymore, but um, yeah, I do apologize for that ugliness there. But anyway, it is what it is. Wasn't paying attention in the kitchen and I burnt myself. <laughs> All right, so I've just doubled that through, okay, and you'll be able to see that quite well on the camera as well. All right, so I'm going to turn this around. Now, I do have a couple of tips for you. As I said, um, I highly recommend that you, uh, if you've never done this before, that you actually, um, oh, that's going to get in the way there. I think I'll just slide that up um, that you actually mark out your seam allowance if you are a left-handed uh, stitcher you're going to stitch from left to right and if you're a right-handed stitcher you're going to stitch from right to left okay so I am right-handed so I am going to be stitching from the um, right hand side to the left hand side as I said if you're a lefty you go from the other side and I do know that a lot of crafty people are left-handed so I can try and stitch left-handed for you, but it's not going to work. So I'm just going to give you the tips and tricks. All right. So basically we've got our thread in that. We've doubled that over. I'm going to have another sip of coffee because I can hear my voice getting scratchy. And we're going to do a back stitch. Now we're going to come in about a quarter of an inch from the edge. And that's where we're going to come up from underneath. And we are, and not the edge of your um, border, the edge of your bottom one. So I'm just looking underneath and I know that I'm about a quarter of an inch. And I'm just going to bring that up and then I'm going to come back to the edge of my fabric for my first stitch. So this is how we start. Okay, and then we're going to push it through. So if you've done embroidery before, you've done back stitch. So you know that you're working on the top of your fabric, you're working horizontally, okay, your needle's going that way as well. Um, if you're lefty, you're coming back the other way, okay, and you can see here that my needle will end up on the other side and your top thread here that you started with will be in the center roughly, okay. If you've not done this before, do not get too hung up, okay, on um, getting it exactly right for the first time. If you want, you can get yourself a little bit of fabric and you can um, just little swatches of fabric, little squares or something like that. Make yourself a little pot holder and do it all by hand and then you will get the hang and you'll get the feel. And everybody is different. Everybody has a different feel when they are stitching, okay? So just remember that. Don't get too hung up on it and um, you're just going to do your stitches. Now we just pull that through and then we've got our first stitch there. So hopefully you can see that and I'm going to get the camera to come in nice and close and I'll just check that I am in frame. Okay and you can see there that we've got our first stitch. Now I'm doing a little bit bigger stitches than what I normally would do um, and that is purely because for the camera because otherwise you probably won't be able to see it. So my stitches are probably about a quarter inch. I would go a little bit smaller if I wasn't doing this on camera. So maybe um, just under a quarter of an inch, maybe 
Uh, about an eighth of an inch that's about three millimeters so yeah I would probably do an eighth of an inch and that's a three millimeter so for today's I'm doing a quarter which is a six millimeter stitch and I'll probably through habit will get smaller but hopefully you can see this okay so then what we're going to do is we're going to get our needle and we're going to come back where that thread ends that little stitch there and we're just going to go back down in there you can go underneath it you can go um, right in it and then we're just going to bring our needle up on the other side and you can see again that my thread is in between where my needles going into the fabric and coming out okay and we're just going to continue doing that as we go along and essentially you can see that you're starting to get these stitches now if they're a little bit crooked don't stress just try and stay on that oh that was close to my finger I would normally have a um a thimble on <laughs> And that was very close. I, I felt that. <laughs> that gave me that little bit of a tingling sensation then um, that I was getting a little bit close. So you can see there that I'm starting to get my stitches. Now, you do not want to pull it too tight so it gathers like that. We want it to be relaxed, okay? So don't pull it too tight. You want tension on it, but you don't want it to be mega tight, okay? And you can see there I'm automatically starting to get a little bit smaller. <laughs> All right, so... Just make sure that your cotton that's coming out of the fabric when you put your needle in and you come out on the other side that it is somewhat in the middle. Okay, if it's not in the middle, just draw your needle back and start again. And you can see there it's in the middle now. All right, so you're just going to continue that on as you go. So normally, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. So normally I would do my stitches about this small and I'd do it all the way across. The biggest I would probably do them is this one here, but this is the size I sort of like. Um, and I try, and I'm not perfect at it. You know, it's about having the enjoyment of learning a new skill, um, learning how to do things by hand, um, making sure that your, um, your bits and pieces of your table runner don't come through <laughs> like that one just did. Um, and you just basically keep going until you get to the end and you'll get better at it like you will get better at it I promise you when I first done mine I don't actually have my first piece anymore um, I don't know what happened to that just disappeared it was wonky as um, <laughs> it, 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 like the back stitches didn't exactly meet or anything like that now because we're doing a table runner and we're putting a border on you definitely want to come back to your stitches okay and I like to go into the hole um, like into that end of that stitch so I've done that big one you can see I've gone right into that end one and you can see there that because I'm not really close to my work my stitches are a little bit um, of a different size but you can see the general idea of it and that's what I say when you've not done it a lot you just want to practice it and you'll get better at eyeballing it if you feel that you need it to be perfect you can put a dot where you want to go in and and um, where you want your uh, stitches to be okay now I'm just going to open this up and just show you let me just get rid of this we should have a look at the back all right so we can open up our border and you can see it's stitching on like you, it's just like a, a sewing machine except you're doing it by hand okay and so on this side you've got your nice flat stitches on the bottom side it'll look like a bit of a loop okay so hopefully you can see that okay and it's you know it's really nice like you can see that that's going once we've pressed that and everything it's just going to be looking like that I've done it by a um, sewing machine except we've done it by hand and we've taken our time with it and we're just enjoying the zen of our um, stitching and just having a really good time and relaxing and not having to worry about whether we've got power or anything like it this morning I could have sat here and done it because we didn't have power and it's a perfect example of when things don't um always go our way <laughs> it's nice to be able to do something by hand still uh, granted my house is pretty dark so I ha would have had to stitch outside um where the light was but that's fine gets me outdoors it's another way that I can complete projects as well without having to rely on electricity so and I'm just going to follow that um, pencil line all the way across until we have 
done all our stitching. So leave a comment down below and tell me what you're working on today. Are you up to the point where I am putting borders on? Not, like normally I would do this all in um, one go, but I'm thinking that I might do the whole lot. Look at me go. I know, <laughs> I know that I don't like doing hand stitching, but at the end of the day, it'll be good. I can sit in there with my little, I've set my lounge room up for um, doing the EPP now. So I've got my overhead light um, coming over the top of me and um, I've got well I did have my basket sitting in there but it's gone gone for a drive today um, in the car so <laughs> but uh, normally I would have my basket sitting in there just beside me where I sit um, the kids don't really sit in the lounge room anymore so we've sort of claimed our spots my husband and I and I've got like the long coffee table because I generally have my water my coffee whatever happening there and he's got the the chase part where he can stretch out his legs because um, he suffers a lot with a lot of pain in his legs, so he needs to stretch out. So he's there, and I've got the other end of the couch. And um, so I I originally had my cross stitch and a little wheelie um, thing beside the recliner, but um, I found that I couldn't see the TV properly, and then I just was watching the TV and not doing cross stitch. So I don't do any cross stitch in the lounge room. And I just, I put, my husband wanted me to do it in there so I wasn't sitting out here by myself. And I'm like, you know, I'm sorry, I can't do it. I just get distracted and nothing gets done. And so I set it up in the um, in my bedroom and um, I've got it all set up there. And the best part is, and I forgot to mention this on my floss tube yesterday, um, I think I said in my stitch with me that I was struggling to do some of the charts that I had because they're in hoops and not in Q-snaps or, or scroll frames. And um, I've got these new lights that I got for my, um, that clamp onto the edge of my big um, floor frame that sits in front of me and I can use that anywhere. And I thought, oh, I wonder, I've had them for a couple of weeks now and I had a hoop with me in my hand when I was moving and I thought, I wonder, and I clamped it on and it works perfectly. So now all I do is move my arms, the arms at the extension arms out of the way and I can um, hook the hoop up in underneath the two lights. I've got my lights there and um, I can stitch away and I got so much done on, um, because my night walk down was in a hoop. And that's, I think, why I was struggling to um, to get stitches into it. And I worked on that every day last week. And it's just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I can finally sit there and just stitch with stuff in the hoop. It doesn't matter because some things I've still got sitting in hoops. Other things I've got in scroll frames. Others I've got in the Q-snaps. Um but you know when everything is in a q snap it starts to take up a lot of room so i've got like a lot of my really big projects that i'm favoring at the moment in the q snap so i've got uh red dragon uh autumn queen uh lady halloween pandemic and i think that's it oh guardians um oh. Guardians of Notre Dame that is in the scroll frame as well but I haven't worked on that I've just started doing the um the border of that in at the beginning of the year and I haven't worked on it since because I've been working on everything else so you can see here that I'm getting my stitches and I've automatically gone back to the size that I normally do um because that's what I'm used to doing so like I said you will find your and it's about a three millimeter stitch you will find your mojo of your stitching but as I said if you are right-handed you are going to stitch from right to left if you're a left-handed you're going to stitch from left to right okay and um as I said I don't know why I do this but I always put my short borders on I can not give you any explanation whatsoever of why I put my short ones on it's just something that I do on quilts table runners everything and then I put my long sides on so I will can like I'll put my short one on then this end because this ends finished now and then basically um, I will then um, continue on doing the the sashko stitching for the rest of the table runner and then I'll put my next border on and I've made the decision that I am going to actually do this by borders by hand because it's not you can see it's not taking long we've been here for what 15 20 minutes doing this and um yeah and it's not taking long at all and I'm glad that I decided to go with the um the cotton because this is all natural as well 
and um, doubling it is definitely the way to go. So if you've just got your regular sewing cotton, make sure that you just double it and that's going to give it a little bit of added strength as well. Okay. Um, and even if you've got polyester, you can use polyester. I, I would still double it anyway if you've got a 50 weight. Um, if you've got 40 weight, you probably won't need to. Um, definitely won't need to double it if you're using anything below 40 weight. If you're using linen, as you can see, it does tend to fray a little bit. Um, I've got some fray check, so what I will do is after I've done this, I will just put fray check on it because I want to do this whole thing by hand now. Like I am on a mission to do it all by hand. So it is definitely a slow project. Um, I've probably gone a little bit faster than what you guys are probably going at home because I'm trying to do it for a video um, and whatnot. So um, yeah, so I'm hoping by next Saturday I will have all of this finished and ready to put well hopefully I'll have the borders on it as well and I can give you an update so I'm going to be working on something a little bit different next week um, I will talk a little bit about what this happened with this and um, show you how to finish it off and then we'll talk about the next project that we're going to start so and I was going to do the um, you know, the flip method where you lay down your batting and all the rest of it and not have a binding on this and just have it with borders on it. I've since changed my mind. Originally, that's what I was going to do. So I've actually got um, a green in the linen fabric like this that I'm going to use for the binding on it. So, um, and that's just your standard issue um, binding. I'm going to put that all on by hand too. So that's going to be very interesting. Um, you'll probably see that in a couple of weeks because that's going to take a while to get all the way around. <clears throat> but I've got a couple of little projects that um, are in the making at the moment, so um, we can work on those. All right, so when it comes time to finishing your thread, so you can see here I'm getting a bit low and I don't want to stress my fingers. Okay, you want to keep your fingers really relaxed too. You don't want to, like death grip your project you just want to be relaxed and and same as in even within um hand embroidery you don't want to have a death grip on your stuff you just want to um you want to stitch it and you want it relaxed because you want to do it a long time you don't want to do it a short time all right so on the back you can see there that we've just got that nice loop happening but when we want to finish a thread all we're going to do is we're just going to go back in to that last stitch that's come out we're going to draw our uh, thread through to the back and then we are just going to take a small bite underneath those stitches of the fabric, okay, without going through to the other side. And then all we're going to do is just loop our needle through, not once, but twice. Tug it, that will secure it. And then we're just going to uh, slowly weave through. And this is always really awkward to show on camera weave through our thread and I'm just taking a little bit of a bite of the inner facing okay and I'm just sort of weaving it going backwards and forwards just underneath that thread and then that's going to hide my tail and then I will snip it off with my threads that I've got a curve in it and you can see there that now we don't have a tail all right so that's how you finish it off. So even if you get all the way to the end, um, and I don't recommend that you have a really long thread either because that also makes it very difficult, um, knots, all that sort of stuff. Um, I tend to probably draw off about a metre, so a yard, maybe a little bit more, um, and then I bring it, fold it in half, and then that's generally from the tips of my fingers to my shoulder, okay? Um, and I don't tend to go any longer especially with um, embroidery flosses and stuff like that. I don't tend to go any longer than that because you just end up running into more problems than not, okay? So hopefully these little tips and tricks will um, help you. And it probably would have helped if I had my magnifiers on too because, but I mean, the co contrast in the, the thread's pretty good. My stitching's, I haven't done this for a while. My stitching's still okay. It's a little bit wonky in some places, but... It'd be a good two years since I've done something like this. Um, so, 18 months maybe. Can I thread my needle? Probably not. Because my needle thread is also... <laughs> I 
I need to get more. I love the little hummingbird needle threaders and I need to get more of them and put them in with all my stuff. Like, cause I'm always chasing that thing. I got it through the, um, Oh, what's the fat quarters shops uh, box called? So sampler box. That's right. Um, I haven't got it for ages. So, um, yeah, and you just put a little knot in the end. It's okay to have a little knot. Just don't have a really super long tail. So my knot's there, and I'm just going to snip that off so I've got a little bit of a tail, but not too much. And like we did last time, you're going to – so we're restarting this time. You're going to come up a stitch away. So you're not going to come up where you finished off. You're going to come up a stitch away, okay? So I've come up not at the stitch. I've come up a stitch away, and then I'm going to – go back down at my previous stitch and then come out okay so just remember when you start that's how you do it the good thing about this is that you don't really need to do a reverse but this is what I do so you can see there that I've just done a little tiny stitch okay and my stitches come out here now I'm going to go back again and take that stitch now I'm not sure if other people do that I am just the person that likes to make sure that my stuff is not going to come undone when I hand wash it or wash it in the washing machine or anything like that. Okay, so well, what I did there is, and I don't know whether you'll be able to see it, and I will try to get as close as I can without it blurring. And you probably can just see there, there's that little tiny stitch just before, just under it. So I've come out and I've taken that little tiny stitch. It's probably a millimeter, maybe two millimeters. Okay, and then... I've done a stitch again and that's just going to secure it. It's not going to pull through. My knot is nice and secure now and I know that it's like a little back stitch that I'm doing. So without actually going back two or three stitches, okay, as we would do on our sewing machines. All right. Now, if you find that your um, thread's looping, it just means that you've got one thread longer than the other. So just give it a little bit of a tug and it'll even itself out. Okay, now remember you want to have your hands relaxed. You want your threads to be firmly um, in, but you don't want to pull them too tight so it gathers like that. Okay, and when you stop, you want to go down into the stitch, do a loop. And then thread your needle through twice and then weave it back. And then when you start, you want to start a stitch away from your previous stitch. Take a little tiny stitch and then do your proper stitch. Okay, so there are lots of things to remember, but I promise you that you will have success using those techniques. Um, and when we finish up this end, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. And this is pretty much exactly the same thing but I'm going to do one little extra step just to make sure that it doesn't come undone okay and I didn't really I should have done it down here but I didn't do it because we were just starting off so you can do the same when I started back here you can do exactly the same down this end when you start as well it's not necessary but if you're worried that your stitching is not that crush hot or you think it's going to come apart or it's going into a high traffic area, taking that extra two seconds to do that tiny little, um, essentially it's like a lock stitch, if that makes sense. So, you know, when your sewing machine, you've got, um, on my sewing machine, I actually have a button that I can press that does a lock stitch. So it'll stitch in the one spot twice and it makes like a knot inside like it's, it's you can't see a knot or anything but it, it locks it off it means that even when I do a back stitch over it's never going to come undone it's impossible to unpick um, at times and it won't come undone either so you can see here I've got a loop and I've got one um, thread that's actually gone down properly and it just means that one of my threads are uneven so all I do is just gently tug on the th threads separately because I don't want to tug too tight and break it and get them to um, be even again I'm pretty happy with that stitching that I've done all like all the sashiko stitching that I've done um, I think it's turned out really well I'm, I'm so gobsmacked like I knew it, knew it, was, it firmed up the fabric but I didn't realize how much it firmed it up and I was just so surprised of how durable it would be. Like it would make a fantastic handbag or a jacket. Um, and I've got a book and I don't have my um, iPad out here, but I just recently got a ebook that is called, um, 
oh I can't think of what it is I'll have to bring it the next week because I haven't um, I've just started reading it and I um, only got it a couple of days ago and it's fantastic like it, the stuff that I'm learning in it as well is absolutely fantastic so um, and as I said when I started doing this I had never done anything like this before so you're coming on my learning journey as well and I hope that you've been enjoying the series so far and um, like there's certain things that I, I have done or I've seen done and whatnot or I've had a little go at but I've never really followed through with it so this has been a good series to do because this is making me do things all by hand so I'm really excited to be saying to someone this has not seen a sewing machine um, it's seen an iron and uh, um, all that sort of stuff but it hasn't seen other than that it's seen no power it's all been done by the steam of my hand all right so we're getting up to the end and I'm just putting in my last stitch there and I've still got one stitch to go so again I'm going to go down in that stitch to come out onto the other side and I'm just going to take a little bite and to only go through once this time and then I'm going to come back up and in that stitch in between those two stitches where I just went down just before it I'm just going to come up and then I'm going to go back down. Now you're not going to see this. This is all on in the inside. I'm going to go back down between the two stitches. So I'm not sure if you can see that or not. So I've just come back up just below it. Okay. And then all I'm going to do on a, it's sort of on a 45 degree angle. I'm going to go back down in to that hole and then I'm going to do my stitch because this is going to sit for a couple of days um, with the border on it and I'm going to be handling it uh, quite a bit so again we're just going to go through the the fabric on the back without going through to the front we'll do our first knot our first thread through and then lock that off and then we'll weave that through now these knots and everything that I'm doing now are very secure they won't come undone um but if you're concerned that it's going to come undone, you can also put a little bit of um, fray check on it. And that, like, especially if you're still handling it and you're still doing the other ones, just put a little bit of fray check on it and you'll be fine. It won't come undone. Okay. Um, it's just something that I've done too in the past when I've been doing hand sewing and stuff like that. I even sometimes do it on my embroidery, especially if it's a big embroidery piece and I've got to handle it a lot and I've got knots and everything hanging out on the back. I will just put a little bit of fray check. Um, for the most part, I don't have any knots on the back, but when I'm finishing, I like to put, you know, weave it through and stuff. I'll put a little bit of fray check on it and then it'll just stop it from unraveling. It'll just hold it there until it's in its FFO position. All right, so that is our border sewn on. My stitches are okay. I'm happy with those. I'm not looking for perfection. Okay, if you're looking for perfection, there are ways to do it, but it does sort of take away the, a bit of enjoyment of it. Now, if you want all your stitches to be absolutely perfect and, and all that sort of stuff, you can draw your line and then with a red friction pen or something along those lines, you can get your ruler and then you can mark every eighth of an inch all the way along. Too much effort for me, if you ask me. I like the idea of me doing it freehand and not having to worry about that, but the only thing that I do mark... And as I said, I've done this a couple of times now, but I still like to mark that quarter inch because then I know my quarter inch is going to be consistent because when we roll it back, I want my border to look straight. I don't want my border to look like it's wonky. I want it to have, you know, some resemblance that I've put some time and effort into it. Okay, so that's what I do. So I'm not going to worry about pulling the iron up now to press that in place. You can see that that is stitched down quite nicely. It's not hard to stitch through um, as long as you've got a sharp needle. So I recommend that you have an extremely sharp needle. If you're struggling to get through, try a chenille needle because they are quite sharp and they're a strong needle as well. So if you've got, you know, some areas near the edges that have got a lot of layers on it it might be a little bit hard to get through your thimble is going to help you with that but um a chenille needle needle will really help with that um and if you are struggling too i did try the chenille needle um doing some sashiko because it's got the large eye on it and if you're struggling 
um, t with the sashiko needle because it's maybe not um, sharp enough or it's a bit dull or whatever, um, you can just use a chenille needle. That those those beggars are, are, are sharp and believe me, they draw blood when you get get um, happening with your stitching. But you can see there that we've got our little border on. That's going to look beautiful once it's done. I mean, even if I say so myself, I think I'm doing a fabulous job. If no one else agrees with me, at least Nerali likes it and I like it, and that's all that matters, right? <laughs> But I hope that you're enjoying um, this series. I am going to head off today because you can hear my voice is starting to get a bit scratchy. Um, I'm going to continue on with the stitching. You can see here, I'll put the other piece up so you can see what the sort of final border is going to look like. You can see that's just going to be absolutely gorgeous on um, once it's finished and it's going to make that pop. And then I'm going to put... Um, I don't, it's not there. I think it's this green here that I've got in a uh, fat quarter there, this... this it looks almost like a worn green, like it's got some wear to it. Um, I've got some of that, and that's going to be the binding on it. But you can see there that um, I'm not quilting it or anything like that. I think it's just going to be fine as it is, and I'm going to use fusible fleece on it as opposed to cotton batting um, because that will just um, hold it in place. And it won't even when I wash it, it won't um, separate or anything like that. Um, but at this point, I'm not actually going to do any quilting or anything like that. Um, I'm just going to leave it as it is. I mean, this is not going to be in a high traffic area. I may pet it occasionally because I seem to be doing that a lot. Um, and as I said, I really enjoy the... <laughs> I just got myself with a needle. <laughs> no, a pin, actually. Um, I'm really enjoying the slowness of it. Um, I've already gone through some... Um, who was it that asked me? Someone asked me how much I would need for this. So I didn't know because I sort of just made this pattern up and I've been making it up as I've been going. I didn't know how much um, thread I was going to need. I have already gone through one skein. Okay, and when you um, cut your skeins open and you cut it in half and then you've got your lengths of um, Sashiko thread, okay, all I, I've got these little rings from... Um, like their little shower rings, shower curtain rings that you can get. So basically all you do is you fold it in half and then where your looped end is, you just pop that through, okay? And this is a great way so you don't end up with a, a schmozzle <laughs> of thread, which I've ended up in the past. And you just loop it through so it looks like this on the front. And then what can happen from there, and anybody that does embroidery or... Um, cross stitch or any sort of needlework pretty much knows that this is what happens so you can see here I'm just pulling one thread and then I just pull that and it comes out uh, as a single thread and then I just tighten that up and then that keeps all of that nice and tidy and then when I'm not using it to store it all I do is I start twisting it and I keep twisting it and this helps with storage so it's not just fl floundering around in your sewing box and then I keep twisting it so it's got a bit of tension to it so you can see there and then it will twist up on itself okay and then I'll twist that and then I will just put it up through there and then it'll just store it like that okay and that's how I store my thread now if you've got um like a little especially with your white and your cream and if it's going in I've got a dedicated box that I use that is just for sewing and no one goes into it except for me so no grimy fingers are going into it so I don't necessarily need to do that but if you've got like a little um baggy or anything like that just drop it into a plastic bag if you're not going to get to it um every now and again because I've found that they can get dirty pretty quickly if you're not careful and you've got little people you know helping you <laughs> All right, but that is how you sew a border on by hand. I'm going to do the rest of them. You can see that that looks, that's beautiful. I, I really like, I'm glad that I got that pack because I really like that linen color that, against it. It's just setting everything off. But I hope that you've been enjoying the series so far. I will be back again next week to um, show you what I've done throughout the week. I'm going to continue on. I don't have too much more to go. So um, I've got, uh, I'm here now. So I've only got this much to go. I did endeavour to get it done. I was given it a red hot bash. I was up until late last night. I even joked with the ladies that I probably should just, um, I probably just should stay up and and um, 
keep stitching until it's done then film it and put it up but uh, yeah I was not uh, by 11 o'clock I was starting to go a bit cross-eyed so I've got that much to go I'm going to get endeavor to do that I've got uh, a couple of movies to watch this week so I'm going to sit down and and uh, do that while I'm uh, stitch it while I'm watching the movies and then I will um, square up this sides pretty much I think these are pretty much straight now I've just got to square up this bottom edge and uh, square up this end and then just put my borders on and then uh, we will be up to be putting the binding and stuff on so I hope that you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to hand sew uh, your borders on and you can use that technique for clothes making as well um, you know you can use a bit heavier thread maybe double thread up if you're doing underarms or you know any high friction areas on your clothing so you can use that as well but thank you so much for joining me today as I said I do hope that you enjoyed it if you did don't forget to uh, like the video and uh, also subscribe if you've made it this far and you've yet to subscribe make sure you hit that um, all notifications bell to the number one bell and uh, possibly share this with some of your friends across the social medias I would love that if you did that but that's it from me today. Have a lovely day, everybody. I'm off to go and have some honey and lemon tea. And uh, I will see you all again next week for my next installment in the Slow Stitching Saturday. Have a great day, everybody. Happy stitching, and I'll see you then. Bye for now.